Now that I have some basic functionality in my setup, I want to turn my attention to what got me excited about modular in the first place, which is the idea of making weird modules. So this is an old rotary phone dial, and I think it'll be a fun little pulse generator. So if you've never looked inside a rotary dial before, they're pretty cool little devices. There's a lot going on here. Um, several stages of gearing. This is a governor, a centrifugal governor, so that the uh, rot rotary speed stays more or less constant. Um, even though, of course, the spring force changes throughout its whole path. But the heart of it are these two switches. This one on the left is a off normal switch, which just means that it is normally off. It is normally open. I don't know if you can see it, but there's a gap between those two contacts. And then as soon as you start to move the dial, as soon as you start to dial, that closes. And that sends a signal um, on the phone line that you're about to dial, so they need to start paying attention for that. And then it opens up again once the dial has come back all the way around. Over here, uh, this is the pulse generator. And basically every number that comes past on the dial, this opens and closes. So it's closed all the way through here, and then on the way back down, it's generating a pulse train. And that's the number of pulses is just the number that you dialed with zero being 10 pulses and one being one pulse. Um, I don't know if you've ever seen in a movie someone dialing the operator by just tapping uh, the receiver hook. Hello, operator services. That really did work because that's all this is doing is making and breaking the same connection that the receiver hook does. So I really have these two lines, these two sets of lines to work with in turning this into a module. And my plan is each one of these will be an output. One for the off normal switch and one for the pulse generator. There will be five volts by default coming into these on one side. So if you start to dial, then that five volts will come out, will be visible then on the off normal line. And then for each pulse that comes through, you'll see the five volts. But the five volts will be coming from an input I'm going to call the party line, and that'll be normaled into there. So if nothing's plugged in, then you see the five volts. But if something is plugged in there, you'll see whatever's plugged in there. So that could be an audio signal, for instance, which will only be coming all the way through on this line when it's dialing, and will only be coming through in pulses as it dials through this line. Uh, I think that could be kind of fun. We'll have to find out. But it seems like, well, first of all, it's the easiest thing to do, but also it just seems faithful to this mechanism. And it's a cool mechanism. I have the panel blank all machined up. I didn't show that because it's kind of boring. Uh, it's time to start thinking about how to mount the dial. So there's this inner ring, which is uh, a bit under 90 millimeters across, and there are the series of lugs, which are all tapped for uh, 632, it seems. So I'm going to bore out um, that hole here so it can just fit in there, and then I'll think about what exactly I'm doing to get to these lugs. Here it is, nice simple panel, and the dial fits in there really nicely. So now I just need to figure out how it's going to be attached. I have these three lugs. Need to screw those down somehow. Yep, that's a broken drill bit. It's stainless. I should have known better than to try. I've broken a lot of drill bits in stainless. I'm gonna set this up more securely on the mill this time and uh, mill away most of the material 
where I want the three mounting holes to go. Got it set up on the mill. I just pulled over the three draw from the lathe. Um, something I've been meaning to try. I think it's working okay. Uh, definitely a lot more secure than doing it in the vise. So just using the DRO to do a three hole pattern um, after dialing in the, the center of this and just going to mill out most of the material on each of those three spots. Here it is. Um, that ended up taking way longer than I wanted it to, but it's pretty nice now. And the dial goes in here. It's not super snug, because this was just whatever size pipe I happen to have, but it's very close. So I just need to drill holes through um, radially, and then I can mount the dial. there it is all mounted up this ring ended up being way way overkill obviously I left it this thick only because it was easier to clean up on the lathe that way but obviously that was much much more work than it saved so oh well it is nice and solid and I do like nice and solid things so I'm not too worried looks pretty nice all there mounted up just have to do the uh, electronics now Here's the final version of the wiring. A couple things to note. I added some standoffs here because otherwise there wasn't enough space here and the board was uh, hitting the mounting rails. Um, when all the wiring, I tried to make it as reversible as possible to borrow uh, terminology from museum curators. I didn't want to damage the dial. It's a nice old piece of hardware. So I didn't want to cut off any of its connectors or anything like that. I did solder these straight to the plugs, but that's more or less more or less undoable so I think that's fine the big thing though that I realized after I filmed all the wiring was that I needed a resistor here uh, it was a very silly mistake on my part particularly because it's on the official dope for um circuit examples page so no excuse for me not to have realized I needed one there so I was, I'm connecting the plus 12 of the power supply um that's normal through this plug and then that's what gets sent out as signals if you don't have anything else plugged in here. And that's a high on the high end of voltages for signals, but that's acceptable. That is on the Dofer page, but that means that the tip of a patch cable is plus 12 volts. And as you insert or remove a plug, it's very hard not to brush that tip up against the side. And that side is usually grounded. So that's a short circuit and that's not great. Um, my power supply handled it fine. It just blipped off and on. No damage was done that I can see, thankfully, but um, pretty silly of me. So if you're doing this, don't forget that resistor. So I made sure to mount it next to my contact microphone module. 
which is fun. Um, doesn't work so well with the speaker for the demo because we're writing on the edge of feedback, but it does pick up a lot of the noise, a lot of the mechanical sounds, which is pretty fun. This is probably the simplest application. The raw pulse is coming out, going through the inverter and triggering this drum module. Very simple, and now we can uh, adjust exactly what those pulses sound like. In this patch, the pulses out of the rotary dial are advancing this sequencer, which is being fed to an oscillator for its uh, full proactive input. And at the same time, the pulses are also op generating envelopes on this ADSR, which is opening and closing the VCA that the oscillator is feeding into. That's pretty fun, I think. So currently the dial is sending pulses to the reset of the radio music module, which is currently playing Nixon's resignation speech. It's a lot of fun to play with. Yeah. And finally, here is the party line in use. Again, taking Nixon's speech out of radio music. So if I turn up the speaker, what was best for the nation? it's being passed through continuously until I start to dial, and then you'll hear the pulses coming through. So kind of a fun, uh, bit crushy sound effect. That's the rotary dial module. Um, in the future, I'm thinking maybe I'll try and modify the centrifugal uh, governor that's in the back. It'd be nice if it spun a bit slower, I think. That would probably help with playability. But other than that, it's a pretty easy build. If you're thinking about trying it out, I totally recommend it. Let me know if you do, and stay safe, everyone.